All right, Salt Strong Nation, we are back. Joe Simons, let diamonds. We've got Luke Simons, Tony Acevedo, Mark the Shark Goodson. And uh, guys, we're going to be talking about a, perhaps one of the most controversial topics that we have ever talked about on this show. And I'm talking about bait casting reels versus spinning reels. This is going to be a good one. We did the whole line debate, got a ton of feedback, and now we're going to talk about reels. A uh, funny story, I was uh, checking our Instagram messages here recently, and this uh, young man had uh, had said, hey, how come you guys don't use you know casting reels very much on your channel? We have done a couple times, but for the most part, it's spinning. And, uh, and I was just nice back to him. I said, well, do you mind telling me why you use casting reels and he basically just said because it makes me feel more like a man <laughs> but he didn't have a real good answer no, no that was pretty funny um that's, a, that's an honest answer that's a good honest it answer. is a very honest answer yeah. he was from texas so i get it. i lived in texas for a while very proud state i was there for almost five years so I, I get it um texans they they like to do things the hard way sometimes to say i'm, I'm more manly uh in all honesty there are some pros and cons to both there is no perfect answer. I'm hoping, however, we do come up with a champion, a winner by the end of this. And we have Mark, who is an ex-bass fishing pro. And so that guy uh, probably struggled the most going from casting to, to spinning. Uh, so I'm sure you'll have a lot of feedback on that. And Tony as well. Uh, I mean, all of us really came from, you know, bass fishing first. Um, but I know Mark, you know, probably had the, the toughest transition with it and probably has the most feedback. Uh, as an adult so um guys let's get into it who wants to start it off who's re who's ready to convert <laughs> so convert what, from what? what yeah what do, what do yeah, you call yourself what? mark the, the, the fairy six to a man reel <laughs> fly rods fairy are fairy six. <laughs> <laughs> yeah what do you call a fly, a fly reel fly we, rod. We, don't, we, we don't even talk about fly in my business <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was I was like that for for years. I was like that dude that Joe mentioned, where I just I literally thought spin spinning reels and rods were for chumps. Like I I just thought it was for people who couldn't throw bait casting, and uh, and and now I'm kicking myself for like dismissing spinning setups for so long. Yeah, and I think that I think the change happened as far as effectiveness once braid was introduced, um, as far as just castability. And it's so like now I've like total reverse where I had zero spinning outfits and the ones I had were the ones when I was a kid. And now the only bait casting rods, except for one, I just got a new one recently, um, are just from when I was a kid, like when I was like in the low teens. I've totally switched to spinning. I, I just think they're more effective for the fishing I do. Uh, can you clarify on that? I mean, just spinning. I, I'm using, in most cases, pretty light lures, right? Like a like a three inch saw plastic, a three to five inch saw plastic on a weighted hook for fishing shallow water, um, where casting distance is everything. Um, the only fish using artificial lures, which I do, the only fish I can catch are the fish in between me and however far I can cast. So every foot extra distance I can get, all the better. And I'm off and fishing fishing open flats, so. Uh, unlike bait casting, it doesn't matter if I'm punching into the wind or anything. I can just, I can, uh, I can know that I'm not going to get one of those frustrating backlashes. But also, more importantly, is I can, I feel like I can cast further with less effort with spinning setups. A seven six spinning rod with ten pound braid can sling light lures into the wind, with the wind, whatever. In my opinion, better than a bait caster. Ooh, so that's Mark, what I totally switched. What do you say to that, dude? Yeah, it was some of us a long time ago when we were kids learned how to set our magnets properly on bait casting rails. So no, I, I'll give it to Luke. The, you know, the light platform of of lures in our industry, it's difficult with bait casting. There's no doubt. You know, I, I would say right off the bat, and we'll go ahead and get, you know, get it off the back. Where bait casting fails in my opinion is anytime you're trying to skip under docks or get really really low to the water column and, and getting something to glide across the surface um, it takes a lot of practice to do that um, not the easiest method to do so and also casting very very light baits outside of that I'll, 
I'll, I'll go against Luke on anything. Well, well, Luke, Luke mentioned distance. What do you, what about the distance piece of it? You know, to me, it, it's like spinning, you know, when you have the right rod and reel, the balance, the concept, the design of everything, it's no different in the bait casting. I think what most people try to do is, is, you know, get the heaviest outfit instead of getting the best outfit. So there are certainly very, very capable casting rods that will pair with a casting reel that will get just as far on a cast, if not further sometimes, if it's set up properly. So I would say that once you get to that quarter ounce level of lure, man, a casting can, can absolutely launch a product. It's quarter ounce and less that they kind of, you know, they, they have a little bit of an issue with. But so I, I was, I thought that too, I believe, and I, I'm still on the fence, but I thought that too, but I've been, I was throwing this bigger skitter walk and I don't know what, what the weight is of it, but it's like, you know, it's the bigger size one. Yeah. And I bought a bait casting because I wanted to throw a little bit bigger plug. And so I was, I was launching or I, I was like, you know, it was kind of fun again. I haven't thrown bait caster in a while. I was catching some fish with it. And then I decided, let me just put this and I have a, a bait caster. Oh, hold on. I can't remember what, what brand it is. Uh, it's a quantum, I think it's quantum smoke. Is that, is that right? Yeah. I got it from Southeastern. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so I put it on that has 20 pound braid on it, the bait casting. And I put it on my spinning outfit. Bait cast is a seven foot rod, 20 pound braid, quantum smoke reel. Good you need reel. 50 pound braid. That's part of the issue if you have yeah, a That's cast. right. Yeah. And so then I, I put this same lure on my normal rod, my normal spinning rod, which has this is a seven six rod. So it's a little bit longer rod. It's 10 pound line versus 20 pound line. And I was noticeably casting it further with spinning relative to bait casting. And that's like the heavier plugs that I thought was the gonna put the bait casting at, in the advantage. And it was, it was without a doubt casting much further with spinning. So I'm, not, I'm now not sold on that premise. I haven't done a test or anything. And I don't think I should because I don't, I, I think it would be interesting to do a test on someone who does a lot of bait casting and throwing like a big plug like this. And then someone does a lot of spinning um, just to see for certain. But for me personally, I was launching it way further with spinning, but I, ha I have to have lighter line for that. So if I wanted to like power fish a, a big, you know, fishing docks or something that probably wouldn't be smart. Um, but that's what I've seen. Spin the spinning does, does launch the heavier, the heavier lures too. So something that I've noticed, I've used a bait caster using a top water, but I was using 10 pound braid and it launched it much further. However, what I noticed is with the bait casters, you don't want to go too light on your line. You know, you want to focus more on diameter of the line rather than the pound test uh, with bait casters, because if you go really narrow, really thin on bait casters, it just, it's hard to manage that line. It'll dig into your spool. It'll you get a backlash and good luck getting that out. You know, if you use like 20, 30 pound, that's about the equivalent of, what would you say, Mark? 12, 10, 12 pound mono? Probably less. Yeah, it's a lot less, yeah. Still less, yeah. I, I really wouldn't put any less than 20 or 30 pound on a bait caster, but then, you know, that line's gonna be thicker, so it's gonna catch the wind. You may see some effects with casting distance that way. You know, I, I think though <clears throat> the two pros on a bait caster that I feel are much better than a spinning is number one, the accuracy on cast with bait casters, in my opinion, are far superior. And number two, the fatigue. When you have that much weight out in front of you on a spinning versus you being able to tuck it to your chest on a bait casting, I'm telling you, I, I, I can feel a difference between a 3,000 class reel and a bait casting combo. Drastic difference. True. Yeah, I think the biggest need for bait casting is, uh, is like the people who pitch baits, like for the, like a lot of bass angling where it's short pitches, like underhand. I agree that the control is much better because you have you know, your thumb on there. And for like a short pitch, that's really efficient. Um, I, I still think for cat, like I feel more, I, I probably it's whatever I use more, but I feel way more comfortable th doing accurate casts with spinning compared to bait casting, even though I've been, I got forced myself to use bait casting for like a week or two. And 
it was getting more and more comfortable, but I still wasn't anywhere near as comfortable um, as, as far as making accurate casts with that bait caster. Mark, Mark, why would it be more accurate? Is it because you don't have, uh, with the casting, you don't have the line spinning off and it's, it's a little bit closer to the, well, to the rod or what, what's the reason? Yeah, so, so to me, like whenever you try to cast at something with a spinning, Joe, whenever you're loading and unloading that rod, to, to change how fast that's going off, you kind of have to spool it and try to restrict the flow of the line to try to slow that lure down. It, it, it's all for the, for the record. I have never tried to slow a cast down. Okay. <laughs> so I grip it and rip it, baby. <laughs> like yeah, right into mangrove. the mangrove trees. Yeah. Right the I'd, rather <laughs> catch, I'd rather catch a tree than have to stop the spool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the wrong color for squirrels, but the bottom, you know, that, that's one of the beautiful things about bait casting rails is you get, you get to thumb the spool much more efficiently. And if, if you throw it to a mangrove line, throw it to a dock or any kind of, you know, freshwater structure, you know, you can really control how fast and how far that lure goes based on your thumb. And, and it's much harder to do so on a spinning. You have to use your whole other hand to restrict that line flow to really, you know, reduce the speed of that launch. Cool. Another Real quick, I want to give uh, I want to give Cody Self a big shout out. Being uh, seems to be one of the first people to get on these uh, live calls every time. Cody, you the man. And um, just so you guys all are aware, Gregory Ramco is on this live call again, and uh, he actually put in a legit question. Uh, it's a surprise. It's yeah, a serious question. A, what do you guys think about the Abu Garcia Riva four inch baitcaster? Greg, are, you, are you feeling okay today, Gregory? It's, yeah, Greg, uh, are you okay? Uh, <laughs> and we got why? Why did you shut? I saw. I was like, why isn't Wyatt here? Uh, what are you? What are you doing? You got your. Your is that a V neck? No, no, not a V neck. I have okay, I could... with my uh, my internet. I've got an awesome video coming out uh, for the Salt Strong Nation, and I think the exporting took up a lot of problems. Um, so I just. Uh, got on on my phone on cellular data but i'm here now and i'm ready to talk about some spinning rails spinning no this is the big casting section <laughs> and tyler stop laughing at cody i see you down there tyler simmons very close to simon's very close but you know missing the d and an extra m we forgive you like so, and so what was the name i'm not even familiar with that we need to answer greg i mean greg yeah greg so he was asking about the Abu Garcia um, products. You know, I'll just say this and, and I'll keep it PG. Um, when Pure Fishing purchased Abu Garcia, I started to see some of the product line itself starting to do a downward spiral uh, because they were trying to make it more um, price driven based on the platform versus quality driven. Um, you know, the, the company itself drastically has, has changed since the European made product back in the day to today's standard. Um, I don't like a lot of plastic in my bait casters and Abu Garcia has started to put quite a bit in there. Um, there are some Abu Garcias that are on level uh, with the price points that they belong to. The one that you just mentioned, I would say, is a is a good all around reel. Um, still, in my opinion, there are much better reels in the same platform and pricing than what you've just named. So here's the one I have marked. It's the uh, the smoke, the quantum S. smoke S something. Yeah, it's an S three. S three, yeah. Yeah, you sport. I see you're sporting your braid on there. It looks good. Always got to be sporting the braid, Joe. And it's a new lure. I just got a little popper lure. I don't do popping lures very often. And this is lighter, and I couldn't cast it worth a darn. It's way better with spinning, by the way. Yeah. You got treble hooks on there too. Otis is gonna have a. Yeah, well, I just, I just, I haven't taken on the boat yet. I'll, I'm gonna replace the the trebles with singles before I actually use it. I just went on the dock to cast it and wasn't impressed. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think where bait casting kind of struggles, Luke, is, you know, some of the hollow based lures, you know, stuff that doesn't have a lot of weighted you know, or perimeter weighted product. Um, and, and also where I think bait casting struggles is anything that's really flat, flat sided baits. 
because it has a tendency to really plane with the air on a hard launch. Um, so, you know, the lures do, you know, in fact, play a role in it. Um, but I, again, I'll, I'll have to take you out in my boat. You know, I, I still think that the, the accuracy with cast, underhanded, overhanded, side-handed, um, is, is still easier to control than it would be with the spinning. In addition to the ac accuracy, I think you can also cast much quick, much quicker, like recast than with a spinning reel. You know, when you're reeling in a spinning reel, you see a fish, you want to go recast to it. Sometimes you fumble around opening the bale and getting a line and your line gets stuck on your finger or around the bale. You know, bait caster, you just push the button, flip that lure to that fish. Well, let's, let's talk about that, Mark. Let's talk about the gear ratios as, as well. Yeah, and this is where our industry is drastically changing. Um, you know, back in the day, it was really, really slow gear ratios. You know, so the 4.7 to 5 to 1 ratios were kind of like the standard back in the day. And then the 6 to 1 gear ratios kind of overtook the market. And then it was 7 to 1s. Now they're making bait casters up to 10 to 1. Um, so it's you're, you're pulling in anywhere between 28 to 52 inches of line. Uh, on a handle crank i mean it some of the stuff is just blazing fast versus what on a on a spinning uh, most spinning are going to be five to one um you know gear ratios is a standard in the industry um and then most of your high gears are going to be the six to one base um it's it's very rare and there are some you know there's some that are eight to one gear ratios out there uh, but i would say that 95 percent of the market is a five to one, six to one kind of a base market. And when I say six to one, I mean, you know, 6.2 to one, 6.5 to one, it's six something to one. And, and just, just to make sure that we, everybody listening and us are on the same page, so that the ratio means that for one turn of the handle, if it's a 6.3 to one, one turn of the handle would, would rotate the spool 6.3 times. That's correct. And so a spinning, you're saying that most spinning reels have a five-ish to one, and then bait casting have a seven to 10-ish? Um, the most popular bait caster I would say on the market right now is probably a seven to one. Um, it, it's a pretty universal speed now. Um, so yes, yeah, so for every one handle crank, it's, it's seven revolutions of the spool. Um, and I would say that most of your lighter platform spinning reels, including, you know, the, the Dial with Fuego, most of those are in that six to one platform now. Um, and then once you get out of that 4,000 class and go larger, um, that's when you'll get into the five to one base now. And, and so the, um, so the diameter, so the six, the, the actual ratio doesn't really control the amount of line. Like we can't, is it, is it, okay, like should we compare the actual amount of line that comes in? Is that like the more important? Because like this little reel, like I don't know what this is. It's probably a seven to one, it's bait casting. This spool is much smaller than my spinning reel spool. Ooh. So like um, if I have a, if I had like a six to one spinning rod or six to one reel for on my spinning and this was a seven to one, I would be willing to bet that my spinning reel would actually retrieve more line than this per, per crank, given the difference in diameter of the spool. Does that make sense? Uh, yes. You know, so now we're getting to the engineering side. So the spool armor, you know, the arbitrary of the, the actual spool is going to make a difference, of course. Um, so that being number one, but you know, number two though, you know, your long handle crank with the spinning reel was a more, you know, much larger rotation than a, a small handle crank on a bait casting. So yes, in essence, you know, it is based on inches per turn. Um, but how many more turns can you do doing this versus doing this? And of yeah. course I'm exaggerating that motion but in essence that's that's what it is and do do reels um i know all reels have the six to one six point two to one whatever it is do they also show how many inches of line come in per turn yes um, oh so that is more okay cool yes. that, that'll be what i'd be more interested in yeah uh, instead of comparing the spinning reel to the bait caster what i found i did a video on this uh, 
I think a week ago prior to this video about gear ratios and that the Shimano Stratic, the FL has a, the 3000 has a gear ratio of 6.4 to one. And I think it brings in 30, eight inches of line or something like that. Then the 5,000 size has a lower gear ratio and brings in more line. Because the spool's bigger? Yeah, yeah. The spool, yeah. So if you're comparing like one size spinning reel to another, I think the spool size definitely plays a role. Yeah, you're 100% right. All right, so sounds like spinning wins there. Uh, let's go to uh, drag systems. Drag systems, everybody. Drag systems for 200. Mark's jaw just dropped when you made that. <laughs> yeah. play, right? I'm, I'm about to say, hold on. Uh, I, don't, I don't call that a win at all. <laughs> yeah, so so on the on the actual amount of turns, just to clarify Mark's claim that, you know, that the, uh, the amount of effort it takes to turn a spinning reel handle is going to wear somebody out. Um, Let me use my really strong it. hand. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So here are the two, oh, dang it, let me get this thing back up. So a spinning reel versus a bait casting reel. Pretty, I mean, it's, the bait casting is a little bit smaller, but it's maybe like 20%, 30%, 30 on an on a aggressive claim. But we're not, we're not talking a lot of effort more to twist a spinning rod. Hey, this, this this is like the ten pound di diameter braid in a fifteen. That extra ten and twenty percent means something, all right? That's Greg, a Greg, casting. Gregory Ramco says RuPaul drag systems. <laughs> <laughs> He's back. Gregory's back. Uh, yeah, Charles. Charles uh, has got some great points on the on that as well. Uh, that's funny. So let's let's do move. Let's do move over to to drag. Um, obviously I think the guys who are used to using spinning, they like the, the audible sound of it, you know, like hearing that drag go out, don't really have that. Maybe there are some that have that on, uh, on, on casting. What are your thoughts there, Mark, Tony, Wyatt? Mm. Obviously you got sound and then you have like, you know, does, which one's actually more powerful? Mark's like, you gotta be kidding me. Yes. I like the sound of the drag. So, so first of, one, right? That's, people yeah. have that as their phone, the ringtone. No, no, the, screaming out. The, the sound means nothing to me, number one. But number two. Oh, the, you mean except winning in life? That's called yeah. winning, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the, the sound comes into play to tell you to stop reeling. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Now, the two reels that Luke just held up, okay, talking about that smaller reel. That bait casting reel is a 22 to 25 pound class drag system on that bait caster. The same as the larger spinning reel. So, but, but the spinning reel has 20 pounds as well. But that's what I just said. I, I, I gave it an even, Stephen. But look how much larger, though, that spinning reel is compared to the bait caster. Small design, light. You know, palmable. You know, have I sold you yet, Luke? No, yeah, or I have it. I already bought one, so you don't have to sell me one. But, uh, but I, I'm still not sold on it being more of it helping me catch more fish yet. Unless, unless I'm pitching, unless I'm doing like close target pitching, like underhand pitching, where it controls everything, and like, um, like we fished with my guy Canelli. That guy can cast better, and he was using spinning spinning gear for the most part. But like uh, when when doing short casts, I can understand you know where a, a quick pitch to get like a you know right on right on a fish or right on a a hole will be good. But for I, I'm just not, I do mostly long long you know shallow water long casts, and uh, I'm just not sold. I I just haven't yet personally found the benefit of bait casting, and which is why I switched over. Like I I finally switched over once I got totally owned. By, by Chip Tharp, one of my uh, friend, a friend I met in college. I remember it to this day. I went out with him and his dad, and I thought I was a pretty good fisherman. I took my, I took my uh, at that point, I had a Shimano. I used to do Abu Garcia everything, and I got a Shimano something. They totally wrecked me. I caught like one fish, and they caught like 15, and they were all casting. We were casting live pilchards, and I couldn't cast it worth a darn. And uh, finally, I switched, and then I started putting lures on it, and I was like, man, I'm just casting further. So I've totally switched everything spinning. 
with the drag two on bait casters, you know, a bait caster is almost like a winch and you're using heavier lines. So you can lock down that drag and, you know, pull fish out of structure and just crank down. You can't do that with a spinning reel. Like you can't lock down the drag and just crank and pull fish out of structure. You have to, you know, pull back on your rod, reel in the slack, pull back. So I think that's another benefit of the, of the bait caster over spinning. So I think, I think there we will give the casting a, a point, right? For just overall power. Uh, which is why the bass guys, you know, are doing it. You rip it out of anything. It might even cut through steel. I don't know. <laughs> um, and you can, you can cast, um, you, you can cast thicker line farther with bait casting. I think that's a d total win on the bait casting side. Um, with all else being equal. But I think, the, and someone mentioned earlier, areas like, you know, Tampa Bay, Luke, where we spend a lot of time, I think that's meant for spinning in general, right? Because you are going to be casting, if you're a live bait guy you're, or, or girl, you're casting lighter live baits in many cases. It's not like you're there with Lunker Dog casting 12 inch hog legs all the time. And and also too, we're, we're all about distance, right? I mean, we're trying to get as far away from that mangrove line or whatever that piece of structure is to make really, really long casts, which is why even Mike Iaconelli, the dude brought like 15 rods and 80% of the time, he was using spinning for that same reason. And we're, yeah. we were skipping under docks, too. I mean, it, it is, the skipping part is, I think, a big win for the spinning. Um, I don't know. What, why, what do, you, do you use bait casting at all? I've played with bait casting before uh, in both saltwater and, and freshwater. And I know we're on the topic of drag systems. So one thing that I, I actually do prefer for the bait casting side is if you're fighting a fish and you've got a spinning reel, and I experienced this yesterday, if you need to adjust your drag on a spinning reel, you have to take your hand off of the reel handle. So that could possibly put slack in your line. And, you know, you need to keep that line taunt if you're fighting a fish. So it, it, with the bait caster, you can adjust it, you know, as you're fighting a fish with one hand. So You've got your hand on the reel uh, with the bait caster cranking in, keeping the line tight, and you can play with the drag as it's a star drag on, on most bait casting reels on the right hand side. I mean, I'm a left-handed fisherman, so I'm holding the rod uh, and, and I'm fighting the fish. I can, you know, adjust the drag as we're going. With uh, I lost a fish yesterday on spinning tackle. Um, you know, I was heading towards some oysters, and I wanted to crank down on the uh, on the drag to try and pull it away from that area. I had to take my hand off of the reel. The fish was continuing to, you know, move and I wasn't able to keep that, uh, that tautness in my line. So I, that's one thing I would 100% give to the, uh, to the bait caster is, uh, you can, you know, adjust your drag while you're fighting. Um, but that would, that would be really the only thing I, I, I know that, you know, you can wench fish out. I find that the drag is a lot smoother on, on spin casting reels though. Um, if you know, my drag's really tight and a fish starts ripping most, reels that I've used, I've not used any of, you know, Mark's really high end bait casting reels. Um, my, most of my spinning reels, you know, have a very, very smooth drag, uh, and a, a quick, you know, snap or run from a fish. Uh, I feel is better handled by the, the spinning reels drag. That's just my personal opinion in the spinning reels versus the bait casting reels that I've used. I'll give, we'll give a half point to bait casting reels there. Cause that also means you don't have to put your purse down uh, while you're fighting a fish with your bait caster. So half point there, Mark, half point. Yeah, Luke, let me ask you a question. On your Fuego combo in front of you right now, what is your rod rating on that uh, rod and reel combo? Rod rating. And, uh, and number two, did it come with a purse with purchase? No, and I'm, I'm still waiting on it. I haven't received the purse yet. <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting the hair long enough for it, you know. It's, um, so uh, rod is six to 12 pounds, the one that I'm using with it. And I use 10 pound, 10 pound braid, so right in the sweet spot. Okay, so perfect. So that lure rating on that rod then, let me ask you this question. And this is another thing that I love about bait casting. Imagine using a lure at the bottom of the spectrum on that lure rating on that rod and then a lure at the high end spectrum of that rod rating. Okay. Yeah. So now you're using, what is it rated up to a half ounce? This one is a quarter ounce to three quarter ounce. Okay. So imagine using a three quarter ounce lure on that rod. Launching it. Okay. Launching it, but very, very poor action. It, it, it's going to feel like you have a cinder block coming through the water because it's so heavy on that rod and real combo. It's debatable. 
I use my strong hand. <laughs> the, the bait casting yeah, combo. Sounds like a personal problem there, Mark. <laughs> the, range, the range and lure casting and performance is wider on a bait casting. I don't know. So, um, potentially. So, I'm looking at the rod on the, that the bait caster is on. Uh, uh -huh. so that was your next question. Yes. So, lure weight, a quarter to three quarter pounds. Yes, but I want, I want you to use a three quarter ounce lure and you tell me if you have the same fatigue on a spinning that you would have on the bait casting. And that bait casting will handle the three quarter much better than the spinning will handle the three quarter. Have you seen Luke's forearms or like the no. size of his thighs? He didn't have fatigue. <laughs> <laughs> is it, uh, is it the weight? I mean, is like, if a three quarter ounce plug would be like a spinner bait, I, I like a, something like a spinner bait with a lot of resistance, like that. Yeah, hundred uh, percent bait. Those are a pain to fish with spinning. And That's I, right. I, yeah, so I, I I agree with that. I think. Yeah. I so think the dive, the, yeah, the diving baits like a, a three quarter ounce rattle trap, anything with a lip design to it. You know, some of the stuff that we would use on our end, it just it's a whole different ball game using a bait caster versus spinning. Yeah, I, I'm gonna, I won't argue with that one. That's not, that makes sense. Yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm on the fence about – I mean, we can have another one of these calls about rods, but just talking to rod builders, they can put whatever rating on a rod they want to. Uh, so, if it, I don't know. If you match the right rod to the spinning reel, it could still do the same as a bait caster, in my opinion. Try, try it out with a lip plug. I'm telling I'm, you – if, if you have a crankbait, Tony, or if you have, and, and I'm not talking about like a swim bait because again, there's no resistance coming through the water, but you use a, a half ounce lip plug or a spinner bait, feel the difference in, in pressure. Yeah, Mark, I can link for the rod agree. coming to play too. Same, but same rod rating though. And, and you are correct though, Tony. The, the rod manufacturers, it's a disaster. Disaster with lure rating and line rate. I mean, it's, it's a disaster. Yeah. So I'm saying if you, you know, don't pay attention to those rod ratings and pick like a more stout rod, like I've got a, I just got a new rod from Century. It's a weapon and it's rated for three quarter ounce to two and a half ounce. And I've thrown a one sixteenth ounce uh, hook with a slam shady on there. And outcasted my friend who was using a regular rod rated for like a quarter to half ounce or whatever it may be. And then I also used it to throw two ounce bucktail jigs and it worked just fine. So I think you it really got comes a down custom, to rod. a custom black pelican, baby. Yes, sir. I saw, Brand Solid I saw Brandon rod. chime in on here. <laughs> Might have to get him on the next call about rods. Casting casting rod yeah i mean it all obviously tie, ties in uh let's move over to one thing that i i think prevents so many people from from using it and we've all had it uh if you've done any amount of fishing with a bait casting reel is the bird's nest obviously with spinning you get you know line twist and wind knots uh let's talk about the pros and the cons what happens more often uh, and obviously that's going to depend on some skill level as, uh, as well. But to me, it always seems like even, uh, just last week, we, we were down in the Everglades, or I guess a week and a half now, and we started off, or at least I did that first day using, uh, using a bait caster. And like, as soon as all of a sudden we, I, we knew exactly where the fish were. I wanted to make that perfect cast like real quick. And I get a freaking bird's nest. And I'm like, oh, you got to be kidding me. And it always happens at the, at the worst time, whereas I seem to rarely get massive wind knots in, uh, in my spinning gear. So what are, your, what are your thoughts, Mark, Tony, Wyatt, Luke? Yeah, I mean, bait casting reels, I've brought them with me. I got a really bad wind knot, and the reel is done for the day. I can't get the knot out, and if I do, I'm taking out almost half the line. <laughs> so I, I don't have that problem with spinning reels. Ooh, anybody, else? Like anybody else point yeah, I, <laughs> i'll give you my take number one the and y'all have made i can't tell you how many videos luke and joe how many times y'all have trolled the, you know swim bait behind the boat on the flats boat okay so trolling as a method of fishing 
You can't tell me that that's not putting line twists that will hurt your spinning. Uh, how is it? So trolling, trolling lures behind your boat, it's more conducive and a better opportunity with a bait caster than spinning because of that natural line twist that it's putting on your line. So when it's twisting your lure, okay, and it's still coming on lineal to your bait casting, it's gonna come off the same way versus trying to un, you know, uncoil from the spool. I, I actually prefer to rig it correctly where it doesn't do the twisting <laughs> helicopter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it trolling, shouldn't be twisting. It depends on what you're trolling. If you're trolling a spoon, yeah, I was trolling a spoon, definitely, but uh, I, I don't troll spoons just because of that. It's a, I've been trolling lately. I've only been trolling the uh, Slam Shady. So like a Slam Shady uh, big head, that, that does zero twisting. And so there's, there's no problem. Okay. Um, hey, so, Lauren. You know, to, to, to <laughs> us, you know, it, it, the diving baits and, and surface, you know, pelagic baits, because it's on the surface, that's what's causing the twist. And you cannot use spinning. Well, you can use spinning trolling, but 99% of the people do not because as you're surface trolling a bait, you know, and chugging a bait on the surface, it, it's a disaster with spinning gear. Disaster. So wouldn't, wouldn't won't the twist happen with, with bait casting now? Like the, it, it doesn't the matter. Bait. It doesn't matter if it twists because the line comes off on a straight method versus an uncoiling method. I don't know. I'll be curious to test that one out. That's a point for bait casting. <laughs> <laughs> If you're trolling a spoon and you're and you're going too fast and it's twisting on one way nonstop, then um, Wyatt, that's a, that's a quarter Wyatt, point. Did you ever fish up in Tennessee, Wyatt? Whenever you moved up there? Oh yeah, and it was all bait casters. That's that's the the thing about bait casters is I, I feel like they're great for bass fishermen because you know you can you can make those casts that you know you can say they're more precise than I. I a, a spinning reel my personal experience you spinning reel long enough you're comfortable with the rod you can make the exact same cast but i think a lot of that deals with exactly what you were saying earlier on spinnerbait spinnerbait's very popular up in tennessee uh and i will 100 percent give the point to you know bait casters when it comes to spinnerbaits but i stopped using bait casters just because of the bird's nest and you know i got very proficient with bait casters i used them for a very long time but there's no reason, I think, you know, to give yourself an opportunity to make a mistake, um, especially with artificial lures. Our number one goal is to cast it as far as possible and to cover as much ground as possible in areas that we may not be familiar with or we're searching for fish. That's the only way you can guarantee you're going to catch more fish is making the furthest cast possible with the, the lightest line you can uh, and covering as much ground. That's how you're going to catch more fish. So, you know, with bait casters, the further you try to cast and the more power you try to load in to, you know, a toss, if you don't have that tension set right on the spool or you're not familiar with how to do that, you've got a much higher propensity to get a bird cat, a bird's nest. So that alone, I think, you know, you're just leaving room for mistakes that are on your part or just, you know, there could be an issue with the way your line was spooled. So I just don't want to give myself uh, the ability to you know, make a mistake. I'm out there to make all my casts as accurate as possible um, and, and for as long as far as I can throw it. So I, I think in this category, for sure, uh, the bird's nest is a huge con, um, and, and especially you know with our goal with artificial lures, casting as far as you can, it's just going to increase the likelihood of bird's nesting. Yeah, and I have a. Uh... I, I saw uh, Pat Ogletree's on, and, and he said that he uses bait casters on hard baits, spinning for everything else. And I know Pat's been doing a ton of, uh, of topwater plugs lately. And so, Pat, if, you, if you're still watching, if you could please let me know if you've tried spinning. Because um, earlier on, I got, I've been using uh, topwater a lot lately, and I've been throwing this big one. The reason why I stepped off, I wanted to weigh it. This was coming in at a, a little bit over an ounce, which is – which is outside of the range on both my spinning and the bait casting. And I'm cast, I feel like I'm casting there. I, I'm not, I don't no, I don't feel like I'm casting. I am 100% casting this a significant amount further with my spinning setup compared to my bait casting. So I'm curious if you've tried the heavier lures on that you're using with your bait casting with a spinning. Curious to know. Could just be me. It could just be the fact that I've been using spinning for the last 10 years and I just recently got back to bait casting. Probably a, fa a, a part of the factor. Luke, let me ask you this. Whenever you're making a cast with your spinning gear 
after you make a hard cast on an open flat, what is your next step? Do you close your bail manually and then grab your line and come tight with it before you start your retrieve? I high five. I high five the air. Yeah, and I'm still and I'm still worn out from the, all that all that manual effort. So so um, so yes, but uh, I, the reason why I, oh, but but um, I just think at least my, my casting style, like I do, I, I I I spend very little effort and like I have to do way more effort and more motion to cast the the bait casting because with spinning, I literally just have my hands close together and just pull one. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I, pull, I pull one back and another one forward and like I literally don't even move like that's it it goes from there to there and that's that's my cast whereas bait casting you have to make a, a longer a longer swing um so even though I am manually flipping over the bail at the end of it like I'm I'm no more winded one way or the other I guess is my overall point well I, I didn't mean on the winded but why are you doing that just to make sure I don't have uh, have any wind knots Okay, so back to Wyatt's reasoning about the bait casting with backlashes and less wind. You are actually having to compensate not having to make wind knots on spinning gear where it doesn't have to be that way. Once you set it, you can forget it on my side. Set what? Uh, talk about the spool rate ratio? The casting controls. Oh, if you said that if you if you can launch it without getting a backlash, you you're gonna cast so much further with spinning gear, it's not gonna be close. So well, would you rather come home to your to your girlfriend or, or spouse and say, honey, look, look at this beautiful thumb, all these snook I caught with my with my spinning, or would you rather go and say, honey, look at all these little line gashes I got from my, my big caster. Just got my thumb burned all up. <laughs> yeah, we call that fish. We don't call that line burn. That's fish burn. Line burn, boy. Or your thumb's Thumb. green or yellow. <laughs> from, the, from the braid. <laughs> you're sporting, saw, your braid uh, sporting your braid on your thumb now. <laughs> saw Greg, uh, Gregory Ramco. He said, where'd it go? Something about being harder to cast on a kayak with a bait caster. I agree. Uh, I, I noticed that my cast is different as far as how I cast with a bait caster compared to a spinning reel. A uh, spinning reel I can cast to the side, you know, especially if I have rods behind me. I like to cast to the side. I have smacked more rods behind me using a bait caster than any spinning reel. <laughs> Just because I'm, I'm mainly casting overhand or whatever it's called, straight overhead. And it's harder for me to cast to the side with a bait caster. I also reel with the opposite hand. Like I'll cast one side, then I have to switch the bait caster over to the other hand <laughs> after I make my cast. I'll Mark, how do you how that. do you cast uh, a, a bait caster? I, I I retrieve everything spinning and bait casting from the right hand side. No, I mean, uh, how are you casting? Are you doing the little side like CA always does a quick little side whip? Uh, you know, he, or are you uh, it, going over? It just really depends on how I'm fishing. You know, I can, I, I can flip underhand, I can side mount, I can go over the top, you know. Behind just, the back? Uh, if I tried. <laughs> <laughs> so it just really depends on the method of fishing. Yeah, and so, think, and, and Pat, uh, Pat responded back, and thanks, Pat. And uh, so he, he said yes for both, so he has used the spinning and bait casting. And uh, I know he's done a lot of spinning and a lot of bait casting, and, and he, uh, you know, he has found that, the spade casting is better for the plugs. So uh, so I will definitely make a point to keep doing it. It could just be the fact that I, I just, you know, haven't put nearly as much time in the last five years uh, with spinning the bait casting. So yeah, thanks for the input. How you about know, fish and, fighting? Yeah, and then that's what I was about to get to. You know, back in the in Texas and Louisiana market, keep in mind too, Luke, you know, a lot of the smaller spinning reels back in the day, they just didn't have drags, you know, an, an average drag back then was eight pound class drag systems. So growing up in Texas and Louisiana, like I did, you know, the spinning reels, you know, the old Calcutta reels, the, the old Abu Garcia reels, you know, you were talking substantial drag systems back in the day. And, and I think that that's a big part of why, you know, Texas and Louisiana still uses a lot of bait casters is because they've been around forever. They've they always had strong drags. Um, and, and that's, 
I would say in the last 15 years, that spinning finally has caught up to the bait casting market when it comes to the strength of the product. Well, and, and that plus the braid, the, you know, the, I guess the advent of braid, it's, it is, it, it was a, in my opinion, that was the biggest game changer for me. Um, switching from spin, uh, bait casting to spinning as you put a light braid on there, it's just so small and it casts just so much further. And more importantly, it actually doesn't cast that much further than brand new mono. I did a test on 10 pound braid versus 10, 10 pound mono, all else being equal. The braid won by like 2%. It was really close, but that mono gets all that memory really fast. And so after like a month or two, it's not even close. Like in, in braid, I, I have some, I leave braid on for sometimes, you know, multiple years. It just lasts so long and it just stays, it stays, uh, you know, nimble where you can just, you can cast it equally good on day 600 than you can on day one. So, uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm still diehard spinning, but I, you know, I will continue to, uh, to use this bait caster and see, uh, let's, see uh, let's, goes. let's talk cost for, you know, both, uh, the combination of rod and reel. What, uh, obviously there's a massive spectrum, but in terms of having, a legit something that Mark, you would go out on the on the boat with, and be confident and say, "Hey, this is my go-to." What are the cost differences? I don't know that there are any. Um, you know, the the product that Luke has in his hand right now is um, what I consider to be my my workhorse, um, and that's kind of like my my bottom end product, the one that he has there. Um, and that's that $150, $165 platform reel. Um, most of my reels on the competitive side are the grade above the one that he has. And now you're in that $200 market. So, you know, you're at the same price points of what, you know, the Stratix and the Ballistics and all those of the world are. So price point wise, I, I, I don't find it to be any different. Okay. Point to spinning, man. <laughs> If you buy a cheat like a fifty to a hundred dollar bait caster, are you worried about you know how you can adjust it? Is it going to adjust as as well as a two hundred dollar reel? Like you don't have to worry about that with spinning reels. You know you could buy a hundred dollar reel; it's going to cast the same as a two hundred dollar reel. Do you have to worry yeah. about that with bait casters? Uh, well, the, let's let's compare a fifty dollar bait caster to a fifty dollar spinning reel. You know that all things considered equal with price. I still feel like the quality and the 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 bang for the buck is still going to be better with a bait casting reel than it is with a fifty dollars spinning reel. Um, you're you're getting into a lot of really really cheap parts at that, but I think the hundred dollar price spectrum is where it then starts to equal out in quality standards all the way up through. Um, but under a hundred, I still feel that bait casters, you know they offer better quality internal components than what the internals are on a, on a spinning. They're a little tougher to maintain though, aren't they? What's that? I feel like spinning reels are much easier to take apart and maintain. How are they with bait casters? Oh, already point to Tony for the glasses and looking smart. <laughs> <laughs> That's all they're there for. <laughs> so, and, and I'll go ahead and educate and, and I'll give one point to the spinning world. Um, you know, ease of, of taking care of a product, they're the same to me. You know, once you break them down, you know how to break them down. Everything's the same internally. Um, but, and this is the big but, and this is what I, I love about being part of Salt Strong is now we can take the industry, you know, marketing efforts out of this scenario. There is no such thing as a saltwater bait caster, period. Okay. They're being marketed that way. The one that he has in his hand right now, it lists as a saltwater grade bait casting reel. The only thing that makes a bait caster saltwater approved is the paint scheme on the external side of the reel. That's it. This, there's no sealed bait casters on the market, period. So that's where I think spinning does offer a significant advantage is the sealed components for the use of salt water. So that Daiwa Coastal, that, that blue one that I have, the baitcaster, that's, that's really just the same as the freshwater, but with different paint? 
That's correct. They have what they call a salt guard 2.0. So it doesn't allow the salt to corrode the external framing of that reel. That's all that it is. Interesting. Point of spinning. Yep, point of spinning. All right. Then we have now tabulated uh, with my handy dandy calculator. Let's see. Two plus six minus four. Spinning wins. Spinning is the winner, everyone. Yeah, I, I no, that was, a, lot of, a lot of it's just personal preference. Like, yeah, uh, that was a good most, debate. Most of our members in tech, they're not, I don't say most, but I'd say probably the majority, uh, or at least close, are bait casting zit. And I, I think it's a lot about which what you grew up with. And just like with casting accuracy, I think it's whatever you use the most, you're going to be able to be most accurate with. Like, um, yeah, I just, um, I don't think there's any one exact answer. But uh, yeah, I'm seeing a lot. I'm seeing, I'm looking at the comment feed and this kind of goes back and forth. I think spinning has a little bit of advantage on the comment feed, but it's close. Yeah, I definitely agree. It comes down to experience, technique, all that comes into play. But for those diehard bait casting people, like I used to be, um, if you get a chance when you're fishing with somebody who's using a, you know, a, a light, a small spinning rod with with ten pound line and, and a good a fast action rod, you give it a try, and and I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. That that's what finally what 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 made me finally make the switch is getting owned by by some uh, some friends on the water, um, and and I just could clearly see how much easier they were casting those lighter those lighter uh, those lighter baits and I finally made the switch and like uh, it went from the point that I thought spinning tackle was for was for total newbies and, and chumps and uh and the bait casting were for real fishermen and like they, they do have some situations where they they really they really are effective cool well guys this has been awesome we're hitting the uh the hour if uh, you don't already know this, you know, part of one of the main benefits of being part of the Insider Club is we have now 20% off all products and some really, really big changes coming soon in terms of some new product offerings. There's been a lot of craziness. We, I got a couple emails from a few of you insiders last night about just a lot of things out of stock. This is a not just a salt strong shop issue. This is a, a national issue with, uh, with COVID. We're all kind of feeling the, the pain. Uh, from that, these manufacturers have, you know, most of them all had to shut down for a minimum of two weeks, some over a month. And then you had this just like ripple effect from all these different plants around the world were having issues, you know, everything, just the supply chain just shut down for a, for a little while. And so good news is it looks like it's, it seems to be kicking back up, Mark, right? And uh, it looks like it'll be a uh, awesome summer and uh, our shop page is going to be super robust and uh, just one more reason to uh, to join the insider club i saw in one of the recent reports the average angler is uh saltwater angler is spending around sixteen hundred dollars like 1590 or something per year just on tackle and equipment that does not include boats and kayaks that's just going in and buying rods reels lures line etc and uh, you do the math 20 percent off it's a lot of savings and uh and then with the shipping thing too it's going to be another big big change you'll notice as insiders stuff is going to be going out a whole lot faster and uh and a whole lot more uh much more cost efficient is uh as well we've uh because we're doing so much volume now with uh, the post office uh we've figured out some uh some great ways to save money with them which goes just right back to you we don't make money on shipping so we get to pass all those savings on to you so uh, it's going to be super quick we're trying to be amazon quick right like get it out next day and boom uh, have it there priority or first class x uh super super fast and of course at a really low cost so know that all that is uh, happening as we are speaking so uh thank you guys for all the support this has been fun uh obviously these are uh you know friendly and also educational and a little entertaining as, uh, as well. And we love your feedback. If you're watching the replay or if you're listening to this on the podcast or the YouTuber, let us know any questions you have. Uh, we plan on doing these, you know, every week, every other week, however often you guys want us to talk about some, uh, some topic and uh, we might even bring some other guests on is, uh, is, is need be. Uh, but this was, this was fun. I do think that spinning definitely won according to my calculator but then again, Mark probably has a different calculator. It's kind of like politics, right? Maybe we should talk about politics. That'd be a real fun one. <laughs> <laughs>
That's a, that's a terrible <laughs> idea. Kidding, <laughs> kidding. Here we go. And hi right, guys, glad to see glad to see Gregory's feeling better. He's he's leaving some uh, some witty remarks again. So yes. he's back in action. He he's said, back. "Send me right round, baby, right round." Was his last comment. So he's back in action. <laughs> uh, good times. All right, gents, it was a blast. Everyone, go check out saltstorm.com. Join us in the club, where we have all kinds of fun doing stuff like this every week behind the scenes. If you like what we do on YouTube and we do on the podcast, that's our free stuff. The majority of stuff that we do is over a thousand videos and real time, 10 plus thousand real time fishing reports, et cetera, all there in our insider club. So we are out. We will talk to you guys on the next one. Peace.